We will now convene the legislative hearing and start with a special order of business to hear SB 122 by Senators Jackson and Senator Hill. The chair will note that there's not a quorum, so we will proceed as a subcommittee. Um, good morning once again, Senator Jackson. Uh, you may now present uh, SB 122, which is item number um, one on our agenda. Good morning, Mr. Chair and uh, member, member, um, and I appreciate your indulgence. Of course, always getting caught in another committee, and the timing is always interesting here. But thank you for your indulgence, and thank you for the uh, excellent uh, hearing, uh, informational hearing. I, um, I'd like to think I couldn't have planned it better myself, but thank you uh, very much for putting that together. Uh, uh, Senator Hill expressed his uh, regrets he wasn't able to get back in time uh, for this hearing. But um, he and I would first like to, he's the joint author of this measure, he and I would like to accept the suggested amendments uh, mentioned in the analysis on pages 9 and 10, and I will take those as author's amendments. Thank you. Uh, and uh, while also want to thank you and your staff again for that hearing this morning and your continued assistance with this measure. So why did we decide to introduce this bill? Um, last fall, the Senate Judiciary Committee and the Senate Environmental Quality Committees, of which uh, Senator Hill was then the chair, sent a joint letter to various CEQA stakeholders, in fact, to over 40 of them, if I'm not mistaken, asking for their input on how to improve the CEQA process. The committees received responses from a, a large number of stakeholders throughout the state representing a, a, a cross-section of the CEQA community, from environmental groups to labor to cities to businesses to lead agencies to professional planners and academics. And from these responses, we identified three areas of mutual concern and mutual agreement that there were fixes that needed to be made and that could be made. And these three areas were the concurrent preparation of the administrative record, increased use of internet resources, which we heard both those issues identified earlier as areas where some might call it low-hanging fruit, but with CEQA I don't think there is such a thing as low-hanging fruit, but uh, certainly areas where we could probably find common agreement. And then there was the need to discuss strategies for handling late comments. So Senator Hill and I have been clear from the beginning that this measure would focus only on these three limited areas, and this bill was not going to become a CEQA omnibus bill. And uh, that has been our position, and we continue to proceed with that position in, its, in our forefront of our thinking. This is not an omnibus bill. This doesn't address everyone's love slash hate of CEQA. It's just trying to fix some of the more obvious problems. So let me discuss each of these points. The concurrent uh, preparation of the administrative record. Sections 4 and 5 of the bill explicitly authorize lead agencies upon request to project applicants to prepare the record of proceedings during the CEQA process in order to save time and effort in the event of a post-decision CEQA challenge. Now, under current law, an agency must prepare and certify the administrative record after a challenge is filed. However, in situations where an agency believes a project is likely to be challenged, Stakeholder comments we received reflected that it may be more efficient and expeditious if the record is prepared concurrently with the preparation of other project specific, uh, specific environmental documents like negative declarations, EIRs, etc. In my view, if we were to allow for and encourage the concurrent preparation, in those cases where we are, we know there's going to be a challenge, and you heard the testimony earlier that that's only 2% of all CEQA cases, but we know which ones they are. They're the big ones. They're the ones that have inherent controversy associated with them. If we have that record prepared concurrently, it will save anywhere from six months to a year, right there, um, in the, in the uh, cost of time and money. And we know one of the biggest complaints with CEQA is the amount of time it takes to go through the process. This will cut off anywhere up to a year. A simple step, but a one that will save enormous amounts of time and money. So 
Although concurrent preparation isn't specifically prohibited under existing law, it has only been expressly authorized for certain projects like the AB 900 leadership development projects uh, that were also mentioned uh, briefly in this earlier discussion today. Now, some stakeholders have raised concerns with this provision, even though it's optional. Just to make sure everyone understands our intent, I'll quickly take you through what I think are the benefits. First, let's start by thinking of CEQA as a whole. As this committee has stated in prior analysis, and again confirmed earlier, and as I just mentioned, only 2% of all civil cases filed annually in California are CEQA cases. That works to one in every 5,000 cases. Looking just at CEQA lawsuits, uh, the study from the AG's office found that um, in San Francisco, in the latter part of 2011, CEQA challenges were brought against 18 of the 5,203 CEQA projects considered by the city. That works out to about 0.35 percent, a small number. And we've just heard again during this CEQA hearing that confirms that statistic. And I think it's important because uh, that, that only about 2 percent of CEQA, CEQA projects become litigated. So I think that's important to keep in mind. We're talking about the exception, not the rule to CEQA. So um, in the overwhelming number of cases, it would not make sense to opt into concurrently preparing the administrative record since it's really quite unlikely that you're going to need it for litigation purposes. But Think for a minute about the mega project that you know is going to get challenged, like the new King's Arena, which is already being challenged. Projects like this where any delay could threaten its viability, could threaten funding, could threaten um, the uh, sort of the efforts to proceed with all the variables associated with and drive up costs substantially. It might just make good business sense to avoid that delay and opt to just prepare the record as you go along. And given the cost of these mega projects, the cost of preparing the record is not, is not major. I mean, it's all somewhat relative, but with a project of that size and the ones that generally are challenged are these bigger ones, it makes sense. It gives project proponents precisely the option. They don't have to do it, but if they know, and again, we generally know when these projects are going to go to litigation, they can get ahead of the curve, if you will. So. The increase then uh, use of internet resources, overwhelmingly stakeholders noted that the CEQA process makes poor use of internet resources for distributing information, providing notice to affected parties, and facilitating the submission of comments. The current CEQA process is still largely paper-based, and information that is posted online is often buried deep within agency or project proponents' websites. And uh, we heard both uh, the testimony earlier that the Department Governor's Office of Planning and Research uh, currently operates a limited online CEQA repository as part of the state clearinghouse used for state level review of environmental documents. Now, sections one, two, and three of the bill would direct OPR, and I think they are receptive to this, and I'll tell you why in a second, to expand their online CEQA repository to include copies of all CEQA documents in a single repository, forming a true statewide CEQA clearinghouse. Now, this would expedite the CEQA process by eliminating the preparation transmission times for relevant documents, which we know are extraordinarily cumbersome, provide California residents with the, an easy-to-use universal point of entry into the CEQA process, and um, uh, this, uh, of course, um, makes it harder also to justify the last-minute document dumps phrase that, that exists. But it potentially reduces agency resources used to distribute paper-based materials. And in fact, initial reports from the administration indicate that this part of the bill will lower the overall cost of complying with CEQA. And as the committee analysis points out, expanding the state CEQA clearinghouse as proposed uh, in this bill initially is likely to save over $250,000 annually and may easily exceed $500,000 when you think of staff time, when you think of paper, when you think of the processing of this using 19th and 20th century techniques in a 21st century world. 
that's why having this clearinghouse is almost kind of a no-brainer. And I know OPR is, uh, is in, involved in this, and this is one of those areas, I think, where we should have universal agreement. If we want to expedite CEQA, and I don't think anybody disagrees, or some would like to see CEQA go away, but as I've mentioned, that's not the intent of this bill, um, that in order to expedite it, these two points uh, are important, uh, but yet somewhat obvious. And so um, those two uh, parts of the bill have been, uh, we've had a little bit of uh, disagreement, but I think we're on the right track. The third part of this bill has been the real challenge, and that is the handling uh, of late comments. Now, discussions last year on Senator Hill's then SB 1451 indicated the comments presented to the lead agency late in the process or during the final hearing on a project have been a recurring problem for at least some of the uh, CEQA processes. And when this happens, the process does not allow sufficient time for these late comments to be ad adequately reviewed and analyzed and incorporated into the CEQA decision-making process. Past attempts to address this problem have encountered resistance uh, out of a concern they'd restrict public involvement in CEQA, particularly for individuals who are unfamiliar with the process. For others, it's been a tool that's been used to try to further delay CEQA. So since the beginning of March, um, uh, Senator Hill and I have been holding weekly stakeholder meetings to try to find a solution to this unresolved uh, problem. They have been incredibly difficult. Um, we believe that we're just not making uh, sufficient progress to warrant keeping this issue in the bill. So rather than to destroy the good for the sake of the perfect, uh, we are going to uh, remove Section 6, uh, which is currently intent language. We're going to ask that it be removed from the bill. We're going to keep working on this. We're going to open, be open to revisiting the issue next year if, frankly, there's a willingness from stakeholders to do so. But this has been the 800-pound gorilla in the room, and we just can't seem to get um, meaningful conversations uh, at the table right now. So our overall objective from the beginning has been to improve the CEQA process without undermining public participation or informed environmental decision-making. And our intent is not to create a sea change in CEQA. And as you may recall from the question that I asked of the second witness today, he agrees, and I think most people agree, that overall CEQA has benefited the state. It's made the projects better. Uh, it has protected the state. I like to say to people, no matter what you think of CEQA, you look at particularly in my coastal area, and I thank CEQA for not having the coast of California look like Miami Beach and with all due respect to Miami Beach, of course. Um, with the two remaining provisions left in uh, SB 122, it is a modest and practical measure designed to bring CEQA into the uh, 21st century and to make it more efficient and more accessible to the public. I have here witnesses in support who can help answer any questions you might have. And with that, I would respectfully ask for your I vote, so along with Senator for, Hill. For clarification, um, if we, if we get a quorum and we move the bill, you would like to have section uh, six on page 13 of SB 22, those eight lines or wherever it is, removed? That's correct. To strike it. Okay. Keep that in mind. Please, first witness. Good morning. Ellison Folk, and I'm a partner at Shoot Mahali and Weinberger, uh, which is a, an environmental and land use law firm in San Francisco. And I've practiced uh, for 25 years now, and I represent uh, primarily public agencies and environmental groups in the CEQA process. So I have experience uh, both defending environmental documents in court and challenging the adequacy of environmental review for, for projects. So I think I have a good perspective on both sides of the CEQA issue and, and how agencies approach it and how community groups and environmental groups see it. And I'm here to support the bill. I think it makes um, two important changes that will make CEQA more effective and more efficient. Uh, and the first is the provision um, regarding concurrent preparation of the administrative record. One of the issues um, or complaints that people often have about CEQA is the delay that it causes for projects and the delay that litigation entails. And, and I think that um, those complaints are largely exaggerated 
uh, as Senator Jackson mentioned, most projects aren't challenged at all. And actually, CEQA litigation is, is 0.02% of all civil litigation that's filed every year. So there are really very few CEQA cases compared to the you know, broader range of civil litigation that we have in the state. Uh, but if there is one area where um, litigation does, CEQA litigation does get bogged down, it is in preparation of the administrative record. Uh, and it can take, as Senator Jackson said, six months to a year sometimes to get a record prepared. And sometimes that's because the parties are fighting over it. But most often it's because there's so many documents involved. And a lot of times these documents are sitting in a box in the agency's office. And just the process of going through, I said one box, actually, I should say 10 to 12, 20, 25 boxes. Um, and the process of going through those boxes and um, deciding what goes in the record, indexing the documents, <coughs> organizing them is, is very time consuming. And so allowing for project proponents who are concerned about delay to request concurrent preparation of the record will, I think, dramatically speed up that process and it gives them an option to make their case move faster in the event that litigation is filed. And because it's optional, I don't believe it puts any real burden on a project proponent or the public agencies unless, um, unless they want to take that on. And the other uh, point I'd make is that a lot of agencies do some mini version of this now anyway. They, if you look at the agenda for a hearing, they often have links to the environmental documents or the public comment or the notices for the project. Uh, but it's, it's somewhat hit and miss and it's only sort of a smaller subset of what documents would be in the record. Uh, and this is a way to Ex sort of expand a, pro a process that many agencies already engage in and make it more effective. Uh, the second provision uh, deals with the electronic posting of notices and environmental documents. And again, uh, this is to me a no brainer. It really does bring CEQA into the internet age. And the process we have right now is really antiquated where we're dealing with paper copies and posting in the county clerk's office. And people have to go down to the county clerk's office to see if the piece of paper has been posted. Um, and it, it's just, it's incredibly inefficient and it doesn't make any sense. Um, and so putting, allowing for electronic posting uh, not only modernizes the statute, it supports one of the key purposes of CEQA, which is public participation and uh, the dissemination of information about the significant effects of a project. Uh, and, and this proposal also builds on the in existing infrastructure that we have with OPR and the CEQANET database, uh, but it, it does it in a fashion that re you know, reflects the fact that we are now in the internet age. And the last thing I'd say about this is it's not as if requiring electronic posting is going to mean that we have agency staff people sitting in front of a Xerox machine, you know, running documents through the machine to scan them and make them electronic. Almost all environmental documents now are already produced in an electronic format. So it's really not going to add another layer of work. Um, in fact, I think it will save money for most public agencies. Thank you. Next witness. Oh, our, now let's hear for, uh, support for uh, SB uh, 122. And if there are any uh, persons that are listed as opponents who have the authority to go neutral or indicate they uh, and that they may not, will not uh, be uh, opposing the bill with section six deleted, you can come forward also. Please go ahead. Mr. Chairman, members Delaney Hunter on behalf of the Association of Environmental Professionals. We are in strong support of 122. We think it's a right step in the direction of sort of modernizing CEQA and helping the process along. We urge your support. Mr. Chair, members, SRDS on behalf of the State Building and Construction Trades Council. Uh, we're very familiar with CEQA, as you know. Uh, very thankful of this committee and staff and the Senator for uh, taking on this bill, modernizing CEQA, bringing it to the 21st century with regards to uh, the communication and letting uh, notification as well as a database uh, so that people are well informed when these projects are coming to uh, fruition in their communities. Uh, we strongly support the bill and urge your support. Thank you. 
Uh, good morning, uh, Mr. Chair and members. Lauren De Valencia representing the. Uh, good afternoon, maybe. No, still, still morning. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Lauren De Valencia <laughs> representing the American Planning Association. We are supportive of the bill. Um, we do have a few suggestions <clears throat> for amendments that we do plan to work with the, with the both authors on, um, but are supportive. Thank you. Thank you. Morning, Mr. Chair uh, and Senator Leno. Uh, 